ladies, gentlemen, and our friends between and beyond, and welcome to the Kitchen of Creativity for another very special episode of Hook Cooks, the improvised storytelling podcast guaranteed to feed a hunger you didn't know you had. I am Mitch the Monster Chef. My name is Tishbot. Tonight, I will be playing the role of Jack. And I am Connor, your larder critter. It's time to roll up our sleeves for another shift here in the Hook Cook kitchen. I am excited, as always I am, to take a pre-prepared prompt from our producer Vinny and turn that into a tantalizingly tasty tale for you, our dear listener. My fellow Hook Cooks, Mitch and Jack, have both had 24 hours to prepare a short written submission based on that pre-provided prompt, while I have remained in the dark. They'll present their submissions, and from there we'll chop, sizzle, and simmer those ideas upon the track for your delectation, before presenting to you The Plate Up, a fully produced radio play segment based on our freshly baked foolishness. And if you'd like to pre-prepare a prompt of your very own, you can shoot that through to cooksofhooks at gmail.com, or reach out to us across the socials with at hook underscore cooks, Jack, my fellow hook cook. Would you please present the prompt? The uh, prompt is moth dust. Uh, This comes to us from Toastbot9000. It is a a listener submission. Toastbot9000, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Listener submission, moth dust. I got to tell you, that one is tactile. Yeah, you can feel it, can't you? I feel it. You can taste it. Taste it, yeah. Amazing. I mean, I, I almost poo-pooed that, but you can't feel it either. So you can't we feel it, you can't taste it, it, but yet I can feel and taste the moth dust. Okay. Um, I, I, I love it. Excellent submission. I'm a big moth head over here. Mm. Uh, before we sink our teeth into the main meat and potato submissions, though, let's get those trash can thoughts out first. It is time to check the best before yesterday's. Mitch? My best before yesterday for moth dust. Hey, kids, you want to buy some moth dust? Snorting nutmeg to get high is a fool's game. You want that good shit that'll make you tired, but also keep you awake. Cheapest cocaine analog on the market. Cut with ground up mothballs. (laughs) <laughs> right <laughs> make you tired but keep you awake as well <laughs> yeah. deeply unsatisfied oh yeah <laughs> i do like that you in your head it's like what's the dust here mitch because you've explained where the moth bit comes from it's cut with mothballs yeah. but yeah. what is the thing you're cutting with mothballs just cocaine, cocaine. yeah ah so it's- when you say it's like a cocaine analog you mean just, it's it's cocaine. Cocaine. <laughs> actually i thought about this quite a bit um it's like how they have to call some juices fruit flavored drink. Mm. Right. Like it's 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 cut with such a small amount of the worst <laughs> possible cocaine that it's clinically like legally it's a homeopathic <laughs> amount of cocaine. Mitch, but they have to call I it. I don't a think there's analog. a lot of FCC regulation in the in the cocaine industry, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know it's, it's an honor rule. It's an honor <laughs> rule. You must you have to have at least a detectable amount of cocaine <laughs> yes, in the right. moth dust. Okay, uh Jack, what is your best before yesterday? Uh I'm not gonna do best before yesterday. I thought in light of the prompt, maybe we could just we could just take a moment and and sort of remember all our, our fallen moth brothers. So I, I didn't want to like make a joke or a big sort of funny ha ha cocaine thing. Yeah. Out of it, I just wanted to maybe just if we could, you know, all just sort of bow our heads and um, yeah. And I'll I'll say a couple words. Okay. Um, okay. Reverent silence for this, Mitch. Yeah. Yes, please. From ashes to ashes, from moth to dust. The light is so bright. Fly at it. We must. Mm. <laughs> well, now I feel bad. You guys, ever think, you guys ever think a moth has like looked at the sun and been like, fucking one day. I, <laughs> yeah. I feel yeah. like uh, once we get to my meat and potatoes, we might be getting close. Oh. <laughs> oh, let's not jump ahead. I will say, though, it was explained to me once that um, moths are chasing light because they think it's the way out. Hmm. That they're programmed if they're in an enclosed space or if they're in a cave or a hole or a bit in the ground, the way they figure out how to get out is they fly toward the light. So when we shine a light, they think it's like an they exit. They think they're trapped underground. And then they this think is they're the way like, out. oh, that's the way out. Yeah, right. Mm. I got to get back to daylight and life, which is and through the best there. The do that is through your bedside lamp. 
Yeah, mm. which is, you know, not very interesting or funny. Well, you know, <laughs> that doesn't bode well. <laughs> this is a moth-themed episode, so it's at least on brand. Hey, at least I put a moth fact in here yeah, for that's my right. fellow moth head. <laughs> oh, it is informative. <laughs> you did warn us at the top that you were a moth head. <laughs> I, I warned you. Know, you. I warned absurd. you. I'll be bringing some moth-based <laughs> heat. Be for all the moth heads. <laughs> i got to rep my fellow moth heads. Um, yeah. With the best before yesterdays behind us, uh, and sorry, with one best before yesterday and one heartfelt yeah. somber uh, remembrance, poem, uh, remembrance yeah. behind yeah. us, it's time to move on to the main submissions, uh, what we like to call the meat and potatoes. Mitch and Jack have had 24 hours to produce their meat and potato entries. Without further ado, Jack, please present to me your meat and potatoes. Okie dokie. Here we go. Uh, moth dust. Old Jimpo dug dirt. His pappy dug dirt. His grandpappy dug dirt. And by Jessup, if old Jimpo ain't gonna dig the dirt till they lay him down in it. The mine he dug in had been a part of the town for as long as anyone could remember. As much a part of the fabric of the place as the hills it was built into. Jimpo swung his pickaxe and caught a glint of something in the rock before him. Excitement faded as he bent down, realizing the glint wasn't gold, but instead a light, dusty silver. Immediately, he turned back up the line, letting loose a single bellowing roar. Moth dust! Then he quickly followed suit with his fellow miners, covering himself in a nook as the shakes began. As he crouched next to the bucking, rumbling rock wall, his foot shifted a boulder at its base, revealing a vein of the same silvery substance he'd just hit with his pick. And then the ground beneath old Jimbo opened up, and he fell, down into the dirt, the walls around him glittering bright with treasure, the air alive with the buzz and hum of a gigantic creature which had finally, after centuries of slumber, woken up. Oh, they delved too greedily. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, It's, dug it's a deep. moth dragon kind of deal. Moth dragon. It gathers shiny, glittery, bright things. Lights. Lights. Yeah, that <laughs> idea that it's like, it is um, the dust is like centuries of ground together treasure. It's a fine, like, sheen of dust that this moth dragon coats itself in. Yeah. Yeah. And it's sort of, it's buried under all this dirt and they're, like, hitting bits of it and it's kind of shaking around and then they've finally woken it up. Right. Very nice. A, yeah. a little bit of giant moth dragon energy. I like kind of in my head the combinations that are being produced when I try to m- like chimerically mesh a dragon and a moth. Mm. And it's some, producing some good images. And of course, you know, you've got, we can do kind of a smell thing. Yeah. Where we get Benny, Benny in. Benny, 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 Benny yeah. on the track. We're, he's yeah. been dying to get in he's on the track. Been, so, I've been yeah. telling him, you're not big enough, Benny. <laughs> yeah, you're not big enough. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, okay. Um, uh, well, before I get too entranced with the idea of the moth dragon, uh, Mitch, please present to me your meat and potatoes. Moth dust. Religion got it wrong. Medical science was totally in the dark. When you die, you go into the light, and then you come out the other side as a moth. This explains why all moths do is try to go towards the light. They want to come back. The listener and their crew are moths mounting an elaborate infiltration of the local beacon lighting, where, if their intelligence is correct, one of the many lights is not like the others. It is a way back through. Will you make it past the anti-moth security and booby traps, find the light, and get to tell your grandkids you love them one more time? Or will you be moth dust, splattered against the window of a suburban light store? (laughs) That's good. I like that. I like the that it's a beacon lighting. <laughs> You're like moths. What would their greatest treasure hoard be? <laughs> holy grail. But I like the idea that it's full of lights, but only one of them is the way back. You got to pick the one the right to one. the to the other side. Well, you got to try and get like you can try a few, but like then the teen working there will swat you or yeah right the old wizened arthurian knight will be like you chose wrong and you'll turn to ash right that's exactly what happens when i go to beacon lighting right and you should have picked the kind of grubby looking light it's not the fancy one it's like the old looking light because yeah the light of a carpenter yeah Yeah. it's the light that jesus would have used it's a candle it's a candle 
Uh, you have to fly into a candle, then you candle. burn up and you come out the other side. I mean, I think um, there's certainly something... I like the idea... You've actually touched on the thing I wrote up earlier, that idea of like going through the light because yeah. Moth Brain thinks that it's like a way through something. Mm. I like that idea. I like the idea of, again, I liked the beacon lighting. And, you know, I don't know how much free advertisement on this giant platform that I want to give a small competitor like beacon lighting. But I think that we can probably make something work. Um I liked earlier you also said that potentially a moth could try to fly into the sun. I mean, if little moths fly into little lights at a beacon lighting, then a moth dragon would surely be sunward go, right? <laughs> like to fly towards the sun. <laughs> like, that's my way out. Yeah. <laughs> Is that like a self-solving problem? <laughs> where it does feel like <laughs> the moth just flies into the sun and you're like, oh, we're, we're, that's cool. good. That was weird. I think uh, you guys ever seen uh, a moth dragon? <laughs> maybe it's so big that you end up on it. Ah, uh, uh, and it's like hurtling toward the, the sun. sun up into the upper atmosphere. <laughs> I I think I like the idea of there's something in that that the dragon moth wants to get to the sun. I, I like the idea of potentially you're on it, but. You know, maybe it's like you've got your old Jeb situation. I can't remember his Jimpo? name. Jimpo. Jimpo. Classic. He awakens the moth dragon and maybe the moth dragon's like, I'm fucking going to go to the sun and blow it well, up. I have a suggestion. In that situation, Jimpo is like 800 meters down at the bottom of like a long mine tunnel. There would be no sunlight. Mm. The only way that they can possibly like save themselves from this moth dragon is to like get it to sunlight so that it will go towards the sun i worry about the logistics of telling a story of like tricking a dragon into leaving it seems like it might be like kind of passive i'm struggling to think of ways to make that like it would give benny a lot to do if we got him on i think yeah and look give benny a ton to do but you know a lot but <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we have to worry about Benny in this situation. I think we worry sure, about sure. giving us stuff to do. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, good. that's, you know right. I mean? that's, that's yeah, fair. yeah. We think about Benny in front of ourselves far too often. Yeah, yeah. We're I too mean. good to Benny. <laughs> Let's try and tell an underground story then, right? So yeah. we've fallen deep, deep underground, right? Moth dragons. Can we do Ooh, more with kind maybe. of a, a world full of moth-like things? Yeah. Uh, so I, I was thinking about that, right? Rather than it being a dragon itself, it's like a, a like colony of underground sort of anthropomorphized moths. That okay. Moths, but we still, they worship a moth dragon. Cool. And they're trying to like wake it up. Yeah. yeah. We're going to ride him. Into the sun. Into the sun. Into the sun, yeah. The last great exodus of the moths. And this underground cavern, instead of being like an abandoned mine out in the mountains, what if instead uh, Jimpy is a cool, hip, normal kind of skateboarding teen falls down a big (laughs) hole in the city and all the risk is underneath like a population? That's good. Yeah. But what if you're what if you're a moth? What if right. the listener in this situation is a moth and the goal is to ride the dragon to the sun? Okay, so we painted a cool quest. Why make them the antagonists? Yes. Right? Yes. This is we're like, oh, this would be cool to do. But there's yeah. like you know, like yeah, let's, let's do build that. Roblox around it. I love it. All right. So how do these moth uh types know about the dragon let's start there um i like the idea that they have built a community around the sleeping body of this giant ancient moth dragon and haven't been able to wake it up and that is sort of the inciting incident here and that could be because of jimpo and the miners what Um, okay where 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 moth people right they've got a, a society that's built around this sleeping moth dragon so much so that most people are like that thing is never going to wake up. Like that mm-hmm. is, we just live here. That's our, yeah. our God. We worship our spirit, it. We worship it. Yeah. You, through an interaction that we can establish creatively together, 
introduce moss dust to it. And for the first time ever, it goes like... <laughs> it like moves. You introduce cocaine. Cocaine. <laughs> <This big. laughs> Cut with mothballs. Cut with mothballs. <laughs> which you picked up for eight bucks a dime. So the mission is... <laughs> To get this dra- going back into the city that's above this dragon and trying to get like Boko Beak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Legend tells of a, of a substance that may wake <laughs> this dragon. We hear rumors on the wind. The idea is too cool for us to sully it with cocaine. Well, it's like, it's an, an, it's as Mitch mentioned, it's a homeopathic amount of cocaine. <laughs> it's too yeah. cool. It's too okay, cool. Okay, fine. It's to- just moth dust. Don't worry about it. It's moth dust. We'll find a different yeah. way of having moth dust. Like, what is moth dust then if it's not that sweet, sweet cocaine? You're right in that it has to be something that they're going up into the city, almost like TMNT style, right? Yeah. Like through the sewer system to- Hugely like- great addition- it's a moth-based TMNT squad yeah. stealing pizza to give to, like, their god, which yeah. will destroy the entire city and fly them into the sun. Yes, which they want. Which they want. <laughs> they, 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 want. want. <laughs> they want it. They want it yes. so bad. That's all they want. Um, That's, it goes from such a clandestine low ducking through the streets to, like, the city is being destroyed. Yeah. I want it to be like like full like the end has to be full like wish fulfillment shit. Like you're flying like through the atmosphere. They're shooting nukes at you and like the the moth dragons <laughs> like batting them away with wings and stuff. Like nothing yeah. works. Okay, I love this. Um okay, so let's let's flesh that out. We've got our clandestine team mm-hmm. of uh moth freaks. Maybe the the th- uh, moth dust, whatever it is, is at a beacon lighting. <laughs> they, it's dark on the ground where they are, and yep. so they find a way to get like a light down there, and the the dragon reacts to the light, and so they've got to steal. I still really like the idea of it being the moth dust itself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what moth dust is. If we're gonna figure out what moth dust is, maybe we could do it with a side salad. Oh, Hell yeah! yeah. A great yeah. idea. Let's get a side salad going. Let's head on over to the side salad station where we have a selection of freshly picked farm to table prompts curated by none other than my mom, Claire. We've never seen these before, so let's figure out the most effective way to use what we choose or more accurately, what is chosen for us. Without further ado, let's spin the wheel and add some salad to our meal. Ooh. Spin it up. (laughs) Ah, okay. We've actually been in space the whole time. Is, oh, so that's what it says. So, the whole time we've actually been in space. Is that the words of the... The words, as I will read them, is we've actually been in space the whole time. So actually, it has to be a surprise. Yes. Yes. Okay. So maybe they have to, like, they come up from the sewers and they're... And you see the sun. Okay, yeah. Okay. You and your, your n- mutant ninja teen moths. Yeah. Go to the planetarium. And you're like, okay. What? what? <laughs> That's hu- that light's huge. Huge. We thought that it was light. tiny. It looks fucking really small. Yeah. Like, they've seen it in the sky before. They never realized you could actually get there. Yes. The, yeah, and they also thought it was tiny because it looks tiny, right? Yeah. Yes. They're like, we'll never fit. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, it's like that big, man. It's like a dime. Like, it's like what? A you put your thumb over it. How are we going to get through that? Yeah, and then it's yeah. like, oh, whoa! We've actually been in space the whole time. <laughs> We're in space. Yes. Yeah, there, I like that a lot. Okay, cool. All right, it's fun. Um, and that gives us the start. Yeah, uh, our cool teenage mutant uh, taekwondo moths are eating pizza. Sorry, uh, pasta. And hanging out at the planetarium. <laughs> they yeah. sneak into the planetarium. I mean, it's got to be some sort of food on the move, right? Like, what about burritos? <laughs> <laughs> can't, be, can't be a bowl of pasta. Dumplings. Arepa. Burritos. Burritos. Burrito. I mean, a pizza you can eat, like, with your hands. 
like with one hand. I feel like a burrito. A burrito with how are you eating burritos? Just <laughs> two hands. I I grab the <laughs> end and I push it into my face. <laughs> Yeah. I, you go in long ways, right? You just start <laughs> yeah, in the middle. I eat the length of the burrito. I eat burritos like I eat corn on the cob. Yeah. <laughs> Our cool moths eating burritos, hanging out at the planetarium. They learn about the sun. Yeah. Um, they go back. They're like, guys, g- guys. Have y'all heard about Galileo? <laughs> that guy was on some <laughs> shit. That's good. That will get everyone excited to wake the moth dragon up, right? Yeah. But yeah. how do we then go and this is moth dust, right? So I th- I think they go back and that they like they get like we got to set this up as like classic teenage tale, right? They get okay. poo-pooed and they're like, "Nah, that's you're silly." Like Nice. We yeah, are never going to be able to wake the um moth dragon and even if we did, you're just been an idiot like Yeah. You're yeah. you're wrong. It's very small. We've seen it. For sure. The sun is tiny. Can't get there. (laughs) Guys. Okay, cool. They get poo-pooed. They then go out. They they need to have a reason to think that they can then wake the dragon up, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's when they turn to drugs. Yeah. Yeah, Um, Like all teenagers, when you need to wake your inner dragon or your outer dragon that you your community lives around. Okay. So um, we've got a... Um, a dragon that needs waking up, and yes. we've got a couple uh, teen moths that need to discover the secret of moth dust. Now, moth dust is probably going to have to be something like that is innocuous and teenage, because back to your point, Jack, of this being a teenage adventure now, like they need to be like, this is stupid, and you can go down to the moth dragon and hang out with it if you want, right? Yeah. And they're like, we'll, you know, we'll go down there and hang out and talk about it. And then one of them, like, has to throw like chili powder or something to do with the burrito. Yeah. What if it is like a, a a chili salt and lime combination that they've gotten from their burrito place, right? And they don't know what it's called. Okay. And that's why they call it moth dust. Sure. They're like It's oh. like Dorito dust, like gross teenage food. Yeah. Okay. And they're just there and they're hanging out. And then one of them throws the satchel at the other because they're mad or like the little container of like cheese powder or chili powder or whatever it is. Mm. And then it, just- it explodes in the nose of the mighty dragon and it goes, <laughs> That's pretty good. It's got to be something that moths like. Moths like fruit juice. Yeah. Like a big. A Capri Sun. Like, um, Again, how do you how do you powder it, Jack? <laughs> well, the, like the powders that you would have, like um, you go like on like long walks, and you bring like Gatorade powdered Gatorade. Tang, like, tang, tang. That's the thing. Yeah, <laughs> what if it's tang. <laughs> 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 tang. <laughs> teens are into tang, right? <laughs> These teens love tang. <laughs> These mothy tang teens. It's Man, tang, I, I haven't heard a good tang joke since like the late nineties. <laughs> I have good. not heard a good Tang joke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you will hold that record for the rest of this podcast, my friend. All right. Well, so we'll see. They, they're into their Tang satchels of fruity cordial yeah. or whatever the heck. The nerdy one like just likes to eat it. Like he doesn't even mix it with water or whatever. Yeah. And they just like, maybe one of them's paying the other out for eating dry Tang. Yeah. Right. He's like, shut up, man. Yeah. And yeah. maybe they can't read normal they can only read yes. moth so no. they don't know what it is so it, right? it's, for them it's moth dust it's moth of dust. how much they love they the, love it right? the wonderful taste of tang we got to get this moth dust this tangy delicious <laughs> this, this delicious delicious moth orangey tang. drink um okay cool well uh, we have the situation the uh, we have the moth dust being introduced we have the dr- the moth dragon waking up we have the teams now saying we are going to prove that this works they need to do a like a Kool Aid heist, yeah, where, where they steal a truck full of of tang, of tang, yeah, for sure. So that w- one little bit doesn't actually wake up the dragon; it just gets like a tiny reaction. Tiny reaction. Yep. It's never reacted to anything. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Nobody yep. believes them that it reacted to this crap, right? Mm. And they're like, "No, it's the it's this delicious moth dust, bro. It's the like concentrated fruit juice that all yeah. moths love. That all moths <laughs> desire, <laughs> even Dang. the big moth. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, let's say it is. You have to steal like a full semi. Yes. 
of Tang. Yes. There's a one. There's one left. <laughs> <laughs> There's one semi trailer of Tang left in the entire world. They stopped ah. making it in the nineties. <laughs> and it's always on the move. <laughs> it never stops. It gets refueled by planes. <laughs> it never stops. The president <laughs> has one key for the truck. <laughs> And then the Mr. Tang himself has the other key for the truck. <laughs> yeah. I, I am reading here that, that Tang was made famous because it's used on like astronaut like, flights. Astro- it's astronaut yeah. mission stuff. So yeah. what if they like go to Houston? What if it's like they're at the planetarium and it's like it's like this is what astronauts have? Yes. Oh my God, right. about Tang. So Tang at the planetarium. And they're like, okay, well, we this is where all the Tang is. How do we have more <laughs> Tang? We got to go to the... <laughs> we got to go to NASA. <laughs> so they, they have no idea where it is. <laughs> so they're like, the, the most obvious place is uh, uh, Houston. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have a problem. That's brilliant. Okay. Let's just say we're under Houston. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's like... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But the the planetarium, like it's a you know, it's a planetarium that is like connected to uh yeah. like NASA. It's, a, it's like part of the museum yeah. attached to the exactly. It's like established yeah. early that that's where this is, this place, and yeah. that's where you would go for tang. And they <laughs> went there. The it, it was nighttime, and they went there because there's lots of lights. Yep. And they were like, ooh. Yeah. Cool. They went and checked yeah. it out, and they like hanging out there. They found this incredible moth dust. They take that to the Moth Dragon. They have to then steal Tang from some NASA warehouse with a bunch of really confused NASA employees. Yeah. Um, And at which point, successful Dragon Awakening, Mm. the entire Moth, like, culture lives literally on top of the Dragon. So there's no issue with anyone being left behind. Yep. And boom, off it goes, right? And then we have a whole sequence where it's like, uh, NASA. NASA's right there, like launching rockets after you. Like a, a bizarrely like human world that we're putting this tale into yeah. that is just like trying to deal with the moth dragon that is coming. I like from the Houston. idea that um, you have to like hijack a delivery of Tang that is going to like, there's going to be like a rocket launch shortly. And so they're, like, <laughs> they're fueling up with all the stuff yeah. that the astronauts need. So they're sending out a truckload of Tang. The uh, idea of like you're attacking a NASA warehouse is funnier to me because mm. if you're attacking a shipment of Tang, they know that you're attacking a shipment of Tang. But if you're attacking a NASA warehouse, they'll assume you're some kind of super criminal yeah. and that you're attacking it for much more malevolent purposes than just trying yeah, to true, find the true. Tang. I yeah. think that's so funny. Like you've got to that's find cool. Tang and they think you're going to steal like government secrets Launch and codes technology and, stuff. and yeah. shit, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. And you find finally a truck, a semi truck full of Tang. You have to attach it. They steal that uh, t- with the like getting the, tr- the truck back. Let's just say they, they have an entry. They can crash it through something. They get back down. They slide the semi-trailer in such a fashion, it all just, like, pours onto the Moth Dragon. Yes. Right? It needs to be, like, big dramatic end of the chase. Mm. Then Moth Dragon's woken up, they climb on board, and then it's just like, yeah, fuck humanity! <laughs> yeah! People yeah. flying. Yeah. Yeah. I like the, I like the um, image of them, like, driving this s- semi-truck, like, down into the sewers and being just followed by, like, at the end of, like, Blues Brothers, increasingly ridiculous numbers of police cars and <laughs> fire engines and stuff are chased. The flashing lights and sirens are going off behind them and they're trying to, like, don't look at the lights, don't look at the lights. Oh, yeah, and then you <laughs> then it cuts back to, like, their moth mum drinking tea or, or whatever and looking out at the it's one like entrance and then a little bit. everything starts shaking and then sirens are appearing and they're like, oh, my and then God. lights and red and blue and, you know. Okay, I love this. And then it's Moth Dragon. And then when they fly into the sun, it's all fine. That's what they want. Yeah, that's, that's it, and then baby. They, they birth a new society. I think they fly into the sun. I think, I think <laughs> they fly into the sun. I, I think we cut as they're flying toward the sun. Like yeah. from behind, it looks like they're going into it kind of thing. Yeah. 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 And, and then relax. it does like that, like fade out, like <laughs> wink star thing, like in 
the Pokemon Team episodes. Rocket, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I think that's pretty much all the tale that we need to cook up. Do mm-hmm. we have a particular scene that we would like to use for the plate up? Mm. I mean, Steel and Tang from a NASA warehouse is pretty good. It's that pretty final good. chase sequence pretty good as well. Final chase sequence is uh, pretty good. There's a lot of cool scenes here. Um, I also like, yeah, Waken the Dragon. Um, I think it has to be that moment, right? The end of the chase and the dragon wakes up. Yeah. Right? Because yes. we can finish it with like, oh my God, it's yeah. happening. And we can start it in media res, like in the middle of a, a dramatic and interesting chase. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sounds okay. good. Okay. All right, cool, well, cool, cool. with that sorted, easily done and dusted, it's time to head on through to the plate up. Here we go. I'm trying to think of moth sound effects to do. <laughs> Jack, Jack, be moths. <laughs> yes, <laughs> fucking crazy. <laughs> This day's really gotten out of hand. You're still reeling from the realization that the sun is actually out there in space. One huge life-changing revelation is usually enough for a day, but you also discovered that that delicious orange moth dust did something to God. You'd broken curfew, snuck into NASA, and hightailed it out of there with a truck full of astronaut-quality moth dust. Turns out humans don't like it when us moth folk break into their government facilities. The lights and sirens grow ever louder, ever brighter. The truck judders and the engine growls. 20 minutes ago, you didn't know how to drive. Now you know one pedal makes you fast, and fast is good. For once in your life, you're trying to get away from bright lights. The topsiders are not happy. You're no expert in reading human emotions or English, but the bullet holes in the back of your truck need no translation. You feel a moment of weightlessness as the truck clears the outer gutter of the spillway. The air sparkles with the sweet flavor of the loose moth dust. It's on your clothes, in your hair, your wings. Ahead, you see safety. Sewer grate, the end of the spillway, your way home. Behind, you see dozens of vehicles in chase, all flickering with lights. They call to you, they sing. You should slow down to open the grate. Your companions are shouting, screaming, but you don't have time to stop and slow down. You swallow another mouthful of mouth dust and accelerate. You pray to your god, the moth dragon you live on. You will wake them. You will ride them into the sun. You will find your way out. With a bang and a crunch and a screech of metal, you hit the grid. As you fly through the grate, sirens wail, lights flash, and you hit the gas even harder, flying down the straight of the main sewer line leading to Mothman. You bust through the railing at its end, you fly into the storm overflow chamber your community of moth folk have made their home. Time seems to slow as you soar through the air above your humble town. Your hands come off the wheel, and you realize the wheel doesn't matter anymore. This truck is driving itself, and you're just along for the ride. The front of the truck begins to dip, And finally, you see it. The Moth Dragon. Even half buried under the town's many rickety structures, the dragon is enormous, its dusty brown wings spread from wall to wall. Then you realize the angle of your descent is off. You need to land closer to its head. You urge the truck on, pushing it to soar just that little bit further, to land close enough to the great beast that you might deliver your payload. As the hood falls, so does your heart, and you close your eyes, bracing yourself for a crash that never comes. You quickly realize what's happened. You hit the makeshift skate ramp you and your teenage moth pals set up on the side of old Emmy's fruit chew at just the right angle. And somehow, miraculously, as if by the will of your great winged god, you've caught just the gnarly air you needed. The truck flies forward and crashes resoundingly before the dragon's great head. Dust spilling across its nose. You and your friends pile out of the cabin and assemble before the dragon, waiting. You really need this to work.
As the tangy dust settles and the moth dragon remains unmoving, the weight of your failure begins to creep in. You've revealed your hidden home to the Topsiders, an unforgivable transgression. Worse still, the mighty moth dragon's noble sleeping face has been sullied with bright orange moth dust. And for what? For nothing. Your parents, your principal, the moth folk authorities, they were right. You should have just stayed in your lane, minded your mothy P's and mothy Q's, kept your mothy head down until... A low, powerful rumble fills the enormous underground cavern. The ground shudders. An ineffable electricity fills the air as the moth dragon, dormant for time immemorial, awakens. As its body begins to move and stretch, moth folk grip the newly awakened surface on which they've lived their whole lives. Cheers and howls of blissful triumph begin to fill the cavern as the truth dawns on them. You were right. The kids, they were right. Behind you, topsider authorities, who had previously been so very assertive, now flee in abject horror retreating from the immense moth dragon as it eagerly begins consuming the spilled moth dust. And as they retreat, you look to your fellow teenage sewer moths. You only have one chance to catch this flight. Time to hustle. With moth-like zigs and sewer-style zags, you and your mothly crew mount the moth dragon as it gorges on the bright orange dust spilled around it. Before you know it, the moth dust has been consumed, and the mighty moth dragon begins its ascent upwards. Harnessing its new dust-borne energy, the moth dragon spews a beam of orange light upward, clearing a path to the sky, clearing a path to the biggest light you're capable of reaching, the sun. Upward and upward, you and your whole town saw all those who had doubted you now screaming praise for you into the rushing wind. Jets are scrambled and missiles are launched, but it means nothing. The moth dragon effortlessly bats away all military efforts, flying ever upward, ever higher toward the final moth escape, the bright light, the big exit. Tears of joy roll forth. You've saved your people, shown them the route to the greatest light of all. You don't know what lies on the other side of the light. No one does, but you're about to find out. Moths! Bing! Yeah, look, I, I'm really happy that we were able to do one of my favorite of of the, the little critters that scurry around here. The moth, big yeah, moth head. We have heard that, yeah. So very happy head. to get the moth on the track. I'd like to thank you, our dear listener, for joining us for another shift here in the Hook Cook Kitchen. If you have a prompt that you would like us to turn into an episode, a prompt similar to the one submitted by Toastbot9000, Moth Dust, a ripping, roaring episode, shoot that through to cooksofhooks at gmail.com or use at hook underscore cooks for the socials. Yes, and if you enjoyed this meal we delivered, please drop us a review or give us those gorgeous stars. Both us and the algorithm love your validation. Or if you happen to have friends in moth space, why not tell them about this quote-unquote cool podcast? <laughs> thank you to our listener, who we thank for our opening theme, Sailing Away, and thank you to Jack's mum for the side salad. Thanks, man. Thank you. I have been Connor, your larder critter. I'm just about playing the role of Jack. And I am Mitch, the Mothster Chef. Thank you for listening. Are we happy, boys? Yes. yes. Mothster <laughs> Chef. Mothster <laughs> Chef. Got it in there. My moth fact ended up being like relevant. Well, it kind of makes the whole thing really sad, actually. But they kill a lot of humans.
Yeah. The fact that it's a self-correcting issue is just- <laughs> is good you know that's the happy ending all these moth freaks die <laughs> yeah <laughs>